I am so over this season, to say the least. Every week, at least the last three weeks, I think it all just gets worse and worse in so many different ways. And I think this season is just becoming, uh, or at least showing, everything that is wrong with the Big Brother U.S. franchise, or has been wrong, or has been building over the past several seasons, that in so many different ways, everything about the game, about the show, about casting, about the fandom, is totally broken. And it has been really rearing its ugly head all season, but especially the last three weeks. We talked about uh, over the past week the the major head scratcher of a twist where they completely stopped the game for an entire week of nothing happening. Uh, and it seems like it's all just to get Cam back in the game, which kind of makes sense because the rest of the cast isn't very good TV. And then Cam tries to be good TV, but it seems as though production doesn't want Cam to be good TV this go round. There's the speculation yesterday that there was production interference on Cameron's ideas, and I do agree with it. And we're going to go over some of that today. Let's start with yesterday. Uh, we're going to start with, with the first time Cam came out of the DR uh, yesterday morning. I, I, that night, Cam was talking about putting up Cameron no matter if Jag was on board or not. He said he could do whatever the fuck he wants, which I established in my last video yesterday morning. But once Cam came out of the DR, he immediately went to Bowie and said that he's thinking that it's not time to do that and it might be too early. And that was immediately after coming out of the DR yesterday uh, morning. Now, everyone's talking about the DR session last night, or at least late last night into the wee hours of today morning. But yesterday morning, this was the first time Cam came out came out of the DR with a totally different tune, talking to Bowie how it might be too soon to put up Corey on the block. But then he had a conversation with Matt, and Matt had a total change of heart. He was very gung-ho about the plan, telling Cameron that they should go through with the plan to put up Corey on the block. Matt had a, to a bunch of different ideas as to why that should be the case and Matt was completely on board with it. Matt was so much on board that he went to Suri and Blue, and even though Cam said not to say anything, of course in this cast they always say something, Matt did tell Suri and Blue that Cameron might be thinking about putting uh, Corey on the block. So Matt was already trying to play his cards there. But of course when it came to Jag, Jag was beating a dead horse over and over. Once Jag found out that Cam was going to go through with the plan, he started spiraling, trying to convince Matt with the same argument over and over. Matt was not very responsive to this at first because Jag was basically spiraling, pulling the same kind of argument to Matt over and over because that's what Jag always does. He repeats himself. He talks in circles. It's extremely hard to watch. Yesterday was the first time in weeks I tried to watch more than just a few minutes of a Jag talk on feeds, and it was torture. Somebody put Jag in the U.S. Army to target spies from other countries because it would be far worse than waterboarding. Having to listen to Jag talk is torture. He is a horrible casting decision. Whoever casted him should no longer have a job. Of course, everyone at CBS keeps their job always being terrible at it, but they keep their jobs anyway, so that won't happen. But Jag is definitely one of the most annoying people on feeds ever. I would put him in the top five or six ever. There's the, the problematic people from Big Brother 15 that were hard to watch. There's a problematic person from Big Brother 21 that was hard to watch. There's Brittany and Daniel last season. Daniel was problematic and annoying and dumb. Brittany was just always spiraling. For me personally, she was very hard to watch. But Jag is five times worse than Brittany on feeds. More than a couple minutes, I, I hate his voice. But because Jag is that annoying and talks so much in circles and basically beats you down repeating the same thing over and over, he did eventually wear down Matt that it might be the wrong move. However, Cam was still very much gung-ho 
about uh, putting Corey up. He was pointing out the flaws in Jag and uh, Matt's argument, pointing out that they're not saying they're going to target Corey anytime soon, even though their Jag was so gung ho about saving him this week. So I, of course, Cam's going to think about that. And then Cam gets called to the DR after that conversation, and and it was during Cam and going to the DR that. Jag finally wore down Matt because, I mean, listening to Jag repeat himself in circles for about seven hours got to wear you down. I mean, if I was in that house with Jag, I would have to target him immediately because he is that obnoxious with the way he talks and the way he is now playing this game. The hypocrisy aside, just having to listen to him talk, I don't know how... He, you don't want to target him immediately, but if you can't get him out, I think I would have to self-evict because there's no way I could live with the dude. Um, he is that bad. Uh, but Cam comes back and Jag kind of does the same thing to Cam, beating him down. But after Cam's in the DR for two hours, it's when he starts to have this change of heart again. The DR, we've talked about this for seasons now. They always have an agenda, but one of their biggest agendas is always saving a white showmance. Grodner has saved white showmances for well over a decade now. So it comes as no surprise to me that there was probably production interference with uh, Cam. Every time he came to the, out of the DR yesterday, it's when he started to feel paranoid if it was the right time to put up Corey. So I'm gonna give Jake some credit. I mean, it's because Jake is so obnoxious about the way he does it. I mean, repeating the same thing over and over, I, it, it kind of works, I guess. I don't know how anybody l listens to it, doesn't just walk away, because I would. But you know, advertisements do that. They repeat the same thing over and over so that you remember and it gets in your head. So maybe that's Jag's MO. I think he's just actually naturally obnoxious, annoying, and one of the worst casting decisions of all time, but it works in this regard. However, I do think production did play a part because I watched almost every single moment of Cam on feed yesterday. And it was only each time he came out of the DR that he started feeling paranoid about if he should put up Corey or not. So Cam did not put up Corey. He keeps noms the same. And now we have to have another boring week. It's three boring weeks in a row. Uh, Felicia's the target. Mimi could still be collateral damage. Either way, does it really matter? We're at this point where absolutely nobody is playing to win the game. Every single season, I sit here and I wonder, could the gameplay on Big Brother ever get worse? And every single season, the gameplay gets worse every single time. We are here again. Nobody is playing to win. Nobody is playing a winning game, in my opinion. It's mistake after mistake. You know, Jake yesterday, he's fighting for Corey ridiculously. I, I don't know how Matt does not feel some type of way about Jake after yesterday. Maybe he does and he's holding his cards close. I don't know. But Jake doing all that yesterday to save Corey. And at the same time that, that Jake is doing all this for Corey, Corey's dumbass is saying, I need to get Jake out before Matt. This is the kind of gameplay we have to deal with the rest of the season. And no, not even Sari is playing a winning game or playing to win. When Sari was in power the first third of this game, every single move of hers was to get out one of her own closest ally members. Getting out Heisem, getting out Red, terrible for Sari's game. I don't care if she was playing for Jared. And since if she was playing for Jared, clearly she wasn't playing to win. So nobody playing to win this season, and I'm tired of it. I am so over this season. The fact that there's still five weeks left is, and, and Jake's still in the house, is torture. It's just torture. I have no desire to watch Jag on feeds. And the, the longer Jag is in the house, the less updates I'm going to do. Because I can't watch it. It is that bad. And it's not just the feeds. The twist also ruined the, the episodes for the, the casuals. Even with Cam coming back last night. Last night's episode was less than two and a half million viewers so even the casuals not filling the season after the twist and that's because the game the episodes everything about this franchise is broken we talk about the, the twist 
and how there's now two people in the game, not just who were voted out, no, no, two players that were voted out unanimously and now ha are kind of controlling the house and you don't think the game is broken, the meta of the game is completely damaged after this season, even though a lot of damage has been done over the years. This certainly, a nail in the game coffin, uh, and the fact that we always have players on this game not playing to win, it's just illogical move after illogical move, production interference, Production. I'm trying to follow production's train of thought. They want to keep Cam in the game with their big twist, but then cause paranoia to Cam in his DR sessions. I think maybe they think that this is going to keep Cam around longer because today he tells Corey that Blue is after him and Felicia's throwing Corey under the bus to others and Cam's not throwing Jag and Matt under the bus to Corey. So maybe this does put Cam in their actual good graces and production will now work on Matt and Jag to make them want to help Cam. I don't know. Maybe that's what they're doing. But it's not good to watch. The episode's ratings are in the toilet. The feeds are boring and unbearable. It's so bad. The fandom is broken. This fandom, there is a huge chunk of the fandom that has to make everyone a victim or they can't root for them if they're not a victim. We have Jared in these exit interviews being very serious about apologizing. Jared's taking responsibility for his actions and the fandom still isn't happy with it. They're saying he has a PR coach. I, I mean, come on, you want to villainize everyone just so you can have a victim to root for. And it got so bad yesterday, and it's all about the AmeriCorps stands, or really just the America stands, but that have been insane all season, and you let them be the biggest voice, and then you wonder why the fandom is fucking ridiculous. They're, they're saying yesterday, when it looks like Corey's going on the block, that if Corey goes, it's just misogyny winning in the game. So a man going is misogyny, even though there's two women on the block and one of the women would go home. And that's, I mean, it's just, it makes no sense. You all have lost the plot. Everyone wants to berate Jared for saying redacted, a medical term, by the way. It's a real medical term, just used as slang, but now that's cancelable, allegedly. But he's apologizing for it over that word when the fandom's acting so much worse and when there's actually two redacts who produced this show that should have been fired a long time ago but never will be and we are all having to suffer and watch the same terrible shit every single season. I reached my boiling point today. At, well, really yesterday watching Jag, I mean, it's just unwatchable. It's unwatchable. Jag is unwatchable on feeds. Uh, the episodes have been unwatchable for years and it's no wonder the ratings are under 2.5 million when just about five seasons ago they were double that. Uh, so no surprise there. All the problems this show has had over the years just continues to barrel and barrel. It's like a snowball effect down the mountain. Anyway, I guess I needed to rant today. I don't know when my next update will be because I'm tired of everyone's shitty gameplay. Even Matt yesterday, that was shitty gameplay. Matt doing all that, going to Siri and Blue when he shouldn't have, talking too much. He plays just like everyone else. Everyone wants to praise Matt because it's obvious he's going to have the best chance of winning. But Matt's game isn't that great. It's just like everybody else's. He plays the same way. He talks too much. He goes around too much. He's trying to play with everyone. Everyone has the same M.O. And they all suck at the game. <sighs> Anyway, Big Brother UK starts on Sunday. Bye!